Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. Let's discuss the chapter Biodiversity and Conservation. Part 1 we already did. In this part, we are going to discuss patterns of biodiversity. Under patterns of biodiversity, we are discussing two headings. One, the latitudinal gradient. That means how the species diversity is changing with respect to the latitudes. At the same time, we are also discussing species area relationship. So before we go into the pattern of diversity according to latitudinal gradient, let's understand the main latitudes on the globe. So we know that zero degree in the middle, that latitude is called the equator. And 23 and half degree north and 23 and half degree south, we have Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. The region between this area is called a tropical region. This tropical region has got very high temperature, high intensity of light and uh, less seasonal or moderate climate. Whereas when we go from 23 to 66 and half degree north, this is called the Arctic Circle and here the 66 degree and half degree south is called the Antarctic Circle. So this region is called a temperate zone. The temperate zone has got less light intensity, low temperature and very clear cut seasons are there, very extreme seasons are there. And above this Arctic Circle, it's a frigid zone or the polar region, this is North Pole and this is South Pole where the diversity is least. So we know that light intensity and productivity are directly related. Since more light is available here, naturally the productivity is also high here. So if you go from the equator northwards, then you can see that the species diversity is decreasing. The same way, if you come downwards to the south also, the species diversity is decreasing. Now to see that, we have an example in the textbook. Uh, Colombia is a country which is located near the equator. In Colombia, there are 1,400 species. Our country, India, is lying almost here. Here, we have 1,200 birds. But when you go to New York, which is 41, that is somewhat here in the temperate region, so the species number is coming to 105. We are talking about bird species. From thousands, it is coming to 105 only. Then, if you go further, Greenland, which is at the after the Arctic Pole, that is uh, 71 degree north, then it is only 56 species of birds. So you can see that there is a drastic decrease in the number of species of birds alone if you go up. The same way it is applicable to all the organisms. And if you see a forest in the equator or tropical region, for example Ecuador, the same area of forest if you consider in mid Midwest USA which is in the temperate region. So one forest we are taking in the tropical region, other in the uh, temperate region, both same area if you consider, the tropical region has 10 times more species of vascular plants compared to the temperate one. So these all show that the diversity is very high near the equator or in the tropical region. This is called a latitudinal gradient. There is a gradation in the appearance of biodiversity. And in the tropical region, we have the huge Amazon rainforest. Amazon rainforest has got around 40,000 species of plants, 3,000 species of fishes, 1,300 species of birds, 427 species of mammals, and 427 species of amphibians, 378 species of reptiles, and more than 125,000 varieties of invertebrates. So, very high biodiversity is found in the Amazon region. Now we have an important three mark question. What is the reason for this rich biodiversity in the tropical region compared to temperate region? It's a very important question. Three mark question, three answer, points are there in the answer. The first, the temperate region has got a lot of glaciations in the past which was not there in the tropical region. So in the tropical region, the continuity of life form was there because there was no glaciation, no wiping off of any species. The evolution was continuous, so it was undisturbed for a large number of years which enabled a species diversity. The second aspect is, in the case of the tropical regions, the climate is moderate or we can say that it is less seasonal, relatively more constant and predictable also. 
whereas in temperate regions it's very clear uh, winter is there almost uh, uh, less than 0 degree Celsius. You know that when temperature is going very low, animals behavior pattern also changes. For example, you know birds cannot live there, they migrate to other areas or animals, some animals go into hibernation. So all these are actually suspending the activities during that long period of time. Then the life will be back again on the next season. So there is no continuity here. Whereas in tropical throughout the uh, year that means 12 months almost the same condition though summer and winter are there not very extreme as a result the life is continuous so it gives more time for niche specialization means habitation. Habitat is being specialized for each organism which is also adding in uh, biodiversity increase. And the third aspect here is the rich sunlight or light intensity is high. Light intensity promotes productivity. When more productivity, more biomass. When more biomass, more speciation also can happen. Species area relationship. This was first studied by a German naturalist and geographist Alexander von Humboldt. He studied the diversity distribution of different organisms, different species like plants or birds and amphibians and all. But he found all the four, all these, if he uh, represent it as a graph, it is ending up in a high, rectangular hyperbola. That is, in the y axis, we are marking the species richness, and in the x axis, we are marking area. The graph is resulting in a shape called a rectangular hyperbola. So he found that there is a relationship between the species richness and the area. The more we explore, the more species richness we come across, but only up to a limit. That's why it is coming to a, an end here. Okay, it's becoming stationary. So the more and more area we start exploring, we start discovering new new species. But once you go on a large area beyond a limit, it will not be seen. Again, we see the same species only because the geography is changing in most of the cases. But uh, in this case, we can take a logarithmic scale also. To find out this, if you take a logarithmic scale, what we are getting is a straight line. So the equation would be log s is equal to log c plus z log a. Here s is the species richness, c is the y-intercept, z is the slope or the regression coefficient and a is the area. So when we calculate like this, any species if you take, it is from different parts of this world also, the z value usually comes within 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 only. But here is certain exception for this. That is, if you explore a huge area, for example, like an entire continent, if you explore, the condition may change because you will start seeing more species richness again. So that, that value will increase. So in such cases, if you consider an entire continent, then z value may go up to 0.6 to 1.2. The rotating birds that called the frugivorous birds, their z value goes up to 1.15. We know their distribution is uh, very uh, large and also if I take a continent you can see them in many parts. So the z value is very high. So species area relationship basically says that when we explore more area, species richness increases but only up to a limit. In the next video we will discuss the uh, importance or significance of biodiversity to the ecosystem.